Messi Wero Finney. I am Senior Product Manager at Zen by Perforce. Those of you who have been in the PHP ecosystem for quite a while will probably recognize my name as a person who led Zen Framework for 10 years. Uh, I've been around since 2005 at Zen, uh, doing a variety of roles, but most recently in the product management tree. You can find me on Mastodon at nwap at phpc.social if you're interested in following me there. There's a little bit of PHP content as well as uh, some of my artwork, so fun times. Professionally, you can find me on LinkedIn at Mawiro Finney, in case you would like to follow me there as well. As well, I sometimes post announcements about product releases and other insights about PHP. Today, we're going to talk about the 2024 PHP Landscape Report. I'll detail what it is, how we conduct the survey each year, and some of the demographics around it. From there, we'll dive into the content, looking at what PHP teams are using today, some trends around containers, clouds, and orchestration, as well as PHP compliance and security. We'll also talk about what versions of PHP all of you are using and how often you migrate. And finally, sum it all up with how you all feel around PHP and how it's evolving as a language. So starting off about the 2024 PHP Landscape Report. We conduct this report every year. Performing a survey of PHP consumers and we try and get as wide of a demographic as we possibly can. You can get the full details of the report by scanning in the QR code on the screen. I'll also be displaying it later at the end of the webinar so that you can download it from there as well. You'll be able to find it on our website starting today. The goals of the survey vary from year to year, but in recent years, we've been focusing on how PHP is deployed, where it's deployed, and the various concerns and challenges related to operating PHP applications and APIs. This year we had 572 valid responses. We go through and weed out any spam responses because anytime you have an open survey, you're gonna have people going trying to game it. But we were able to validate 572 responses and they come from what we feel is a reasonably accurate cross-section of the PHP ecosystem. When we looked at job titles, they skewed heavily towards developers, but they also included a sizable amount of management and decision makers, including directors and C-level executives. In terms of development team sizes, they trended heavily towards the under 10 segment, which is great. That's the sweet spot for development teams. So this is fairly accurate in terms of how PHP is developed. We had an even mix of company sizes, ranging from individuals and uh, consultants to all the way up to enterprises. Uh, and it was pretty evenly distributed amongst all the different company sizes that we looked at. When we looked at geography, our largest segment actually hailed from Europe this year, and that was by a large margin. That said, Europe and North America combined made up over 80% of respondents. So that's where we're seeing the bulk of PHP developers. We don't know if this is perhaps that we didn't get enough reach in other regions of the world, or if this is just indicative of where PHP is used. Finally, while the technology sector had the largest presence at roughly 30%, we actually saw respondents from literally every other industry imaginable. Uh, that ranged from healthcare to banking to um, startups to hosting providers to uh, you know individual media companies, et cetera. PHP is used everywhere. Now, one last bookkeeping note here. The survey was concluded shortly before PHP 8.3 was released, so it reflects only through version 8.2. Uh, so be aware of that when you go through here. If you're not seeing 8.3 represented, it's because it actually was concluded before 8.3 was released. In our first segment here, we're going to talk about what PHP teams are using. How is it being used? Where is it being used, etc.? Basically, we use everything. PHP is truly the glue language of the web. For those old timers like me who remember, it's a ball of nails. And this is a term that Terry Che coined uh, probably 15 or 20 years ago. The idea here is that if you chuck it at a wall, it just sticks, right? Because you got nails sticking out of that ball. <laughs> so PHP is like that. You chuck it at the web and it sticks to everything. 
You'll see here that on the left-hand side are relational databases. Everybody uses relational databases with PHP. It's the bread and butter. It's why the LAMP stack exists. It's PHP, it's MySQL. Now, the next biggest area that we saw, web APIs. And this makes sense. Because PHP itself is a glue language for the web, part of that is that we're able to make web requests to anywhere. And so one of the things that people often do is use it to make other web API requests and aggregate information from these web APIs or push it to other web APIs. So that is the next most common area. From there, basically anything data related has an option within PHP. The other part that we see in a substantial adoption of are scaling technologies like caching services and message and job queues. So you see all of these represented to differing degrees. PHP is used to provide websites and to glue it all together. Now, when it comes to operating systems, PHP users love Debian. Uh, and this has been interesting for me to track the last few years. Ubuntu has been the front runner for many years. It really has leapt off the charts at this point with over 50% of our respondents indicating that they use Ubuntu. But it's Debian is not, uh, is our second most used one here. And while it's quite a ways behind uh, Ubuntu, the two of them combined make up a huge amount. In fact, this year we see more usage of Ubuntu and Debian combined than all other types of Linux combined. So that's one thing to note. Uh, and I find it really interesting. Uh, in the past, probably 10 to 15 years ago, CentOS and the Rail ecosystem would have been the most used P uh, Linux distributions within the PHP ecosystem. And this has really changed a lot. Now, the next one that I find interesting is Alpine. This one has grown a lot in the past year. And you'll see that this is echoed later by our observations on container adoption. So the growth in Alpine is directly related to container adoption within the PHP ecosystem. And you'll notice that it's pretty close to what we see for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So people are using containers a lot and they're using a distribution that is optimized for that environment. One that concerned me, however, is that CentOS is still getting used a fair bit. And this is disturbing because the last supported release, the last stable supported release was CentOS 7. And that version reaches end of life this coming June. So to see that 24.5% of respondents are actually still using CentOS tells me that people don't have a migration plan in mind. They're not sure how to get either to a newer version in the RHEL ecosystem and moving to either RHEL or to Alma or Rocky or Navy or Oracle and they aren't quite sure what to do at this point. So this one is concerning from a security perspective. The other one that was surprising to me was Windows. This one jumped by close to five points this year. Uh, and I find this one interesting because while Windows might be ubiquitous within the corporate environments, it's typically used within your uh, desktop environments or for things like SQL Server. So to see that a lot of people are using Windows as a deployment platform for PHP is really interesting. And I'm curious to know what people are doing on Windows and why Windows is becoming a target for deployment and production. Now I've hinted at container and cloud and orchestration topics already. So we're gonna start by looking at cloud. While PHP loves the cloud, more and more people are moving back to in-house and on-premises deployment. Last year was the first year that we saw a cloud operator actually surpassing on-premise deployments, and that was AWS. And this year, their ranking switched, uh, and it's a pretty close switch here. Uh, last year, we saw on-premises at around 40% with Amazon Web Services at like 45 or 46%, and now they have switched places uh, with on-premises being almost 10% more than AWS. Now, AWS has typically been our second most popular deployment location for respondents, but to see the switch tells me that there's a, quite a bit happening in the world. This might be due to economic trends. Uh, many companies are trying to rein in their spending, and one way some can manage that is by bringing the servers back home, especially if they already have data centers set up 
or uh, room for servers and racks of servers already present. Now, interestingly enough, that said, that trend is more pronounced with large companies, where we saw 64% deploying on-premises versus 46% with companies of 100 employees or less. So what we see here is it might actually be more cost-effective to move on-premise if you are a larger player. And that might be because the expertise that you need to have the stuff on-premise might be something that you may not have in-house if you have a smaller company. Now, interestingly enough for me, AWS is about the same usage within both segments. So what's happening on the companies of 100 employees or over is that they are switching to on-premise at the detriment of all other cloud providers. In companies with under 100 employees, we note that DigitalOcean and other not big name like AWS, GCP, and Azure DigitalOcean and these other non-big name cloud providers are far more popular with smaller companies. We're not sure if this is due to cost, the value proposition, or the complexity of the big players, but I do find it an interesting note to see that uh, you know, DigitalOcean is definitely coming in at the expense of Azure and Google Cloud. Now, while cloud is ubiquitous everywhere, so are containers. And you might be asking, you know, is this true? You know, aren't they hard? I've heard all sides of the container debate, but I'll say this, that containers have made replicating production and development environments a far simpler proposition than they used to be even 10 years ago. We've had tools like Vagrant uh, around for 10 to 15 years, and they paved the way for this sort of uh, ability, the ability to quickly and cheaply create and distribute purpose-built environments for your PHP development. But Docker makes it far easier. It's more consistent and uh, makes it easier for you to throw a whole bunch of servers at the solution versus just throwing one server for development. So when you consider that PHP was built for horizontal scaling, containers are a really nice fit. You're able to define the application environment once and then launch it repeatedly in a known, in a known state in order to scale. And it's tremendously powerful. Now, interestingly, we also note that there's a difference in who adopts containers. Larger companies are 10% more likely to adopt than smaller their smaller counterparts. And I would argue that this is probably due to the complexity of containers. Um, while they can be simpler for many purposes, learning it is harder. Uh, it may be exposure. For smaller companies, the employees may not have been exposed to containers, particularly if they're not getting out into the larger PHP ecosystem, you know, like for user groups or conferences. And there may be other factors. There might be cost associated with it. Um, again, complexity, uh, training, all sorts of things. Now, remember all those systems that folks are using with PHP? You know, they're using a web server, obviously, but they're also using you know, a database. They're using a number of web APIs. They might have a search service. They might have a caching service. They might have message queues or job queues, all that stuff. So how do you manage all of those things in addition to your PHP application? Particularly if you think that your PHP application might need to scale, so you might need to throw a whole bunch of PHP nodes behind all of this in order to be able to scale your application. Well, that's a perfect recipe for orchestration. <laughs> this is the reason orchestration exists. So you need some way to manage all those PHP instances and all the different services that they talk to. And what we're seeing is a lot of people are currently using them or plan to. When we talk about orchestration, we want to find out what people are you actually using for orchestration. And when you consider that PHP users love containers, we of course see that the top two orchestration contenders are container-centric with Kubernetes in the lead. However, we were surprised to see Docker Compose and Swarm as the next contender, trailing only a few points behind. And when you break that down by company size, Compose and Swarm actually take the lead for smaller companies by a pretty substantial margin. I've used both of these. Kubernetes is really hard to learn <laughs> and it's very complex. 
And so when you consider that and also the fact that many containerized applications can likely still run on a single actual machine instance, it's a really natural fit. You define a compose environment, you can use it for your uh, development, you can use it for QA, you can use it for production, and it just transfers from one to the next, and you don't have to have a whole lot of management infrastructure underneath it. So it's a really natural fit, and I think with companies under 100 employees, if you are thinking about containers, start with Compose and Swarm, because it may be perfectly fine for your needs. Now, the next thing we wanted to talk about was compliance and security trends. A lot of you have regulatory compliance. And I would say even more so if you're in Europe, as you can see by this nice blue line going off to infinity at the top here, that's GDPR. And that is European centric, right? So we see that, but we also see a lot of other regulatory compliance requirements ranging from ISO standards all the way down to very local standards and some country specific ones. A lot of you have needs for regulatory compliance. You might need to protect customer data. You might need to protect sensitive data, such as health data. That's where HIPAA comes in. If you are doing anything with financial transactions, you likely have regulatory compliances ranging from uh, SOX to PCI and others. So we find that because PHP is a glue language and is being used everywhere, it is falling subject to many of these requirements. Now, on top of that, we start looking at security. And what we found in asking our respondents is that they have very high confidence in PHP when it comes to security. We see here that those the blue and the red are extremely and very confident. And if you look at that, that's a huge number of people. That's almost, uh, it's between two thirds and three quarters of our respondents. The number who are not so confident or not at all confident was under 5%. This is a great thing. For those of you who've been around for 10 or more years, you may recall that you know security has really been the albatross around PHP's neck. There were always talks on the OWASP top 10 at conferences, and there are so many things we had to do to make our application secure. PHP as a language and the frameworks and libraries and the ecosystem have evolved and solved a huge number of security problems. Now, interestingly, that still comes with caveats. <laughs> the confidence is higher, in the C-suite than with developers, which is likely no surprise to those of you who are developers attending this conference, this uh, webinar. Those of you in the trenches every day are likely more skeptical of what's going on than those in the C-suite who might not necessarily see all those little details. Also have noticed that confidence is higher when you're using a supported PHP version. PHP has a new feature release every year, and that feature release gets a total of three years of support, two years where they get active bug fix support, and one additional year with only security patches. So it makes sense that you're going to have higher confidence if you're using a supported PHP version. But there's a problem. A lot of you are in PHP 7 or earlier. And that's a problem because if you're on those unsupported versions of PHP, you're risking some security within your application. Now, why does that matter? PHP 7 reached end of life over a year ago, but a lot of people have not actually upgraded to PHP 8 yet. And that leaves you in a risky place, particularly if a severe vulnerability is reported against PHP, as patches are only applied to those supported versions, like I just said. So the best step you can take to secure your application and get more confidence in your security is to upgrade. The second best is to use an LTS version of PHP, <clears throat> some PHP, but you know, we're not advertising here or anything. So <laughs> moving on. So knowing this about uh, the security aspects, what are the versions of PHP being adopted? Now, one thing to note is that upgrading puts you on a conveyor belt because the Life cycle is so short. And I just mentioned this three years total. You are going to be on this conveyor belt of constantly needing to keep your application updated. You're going to have to perform maintenance on a regular cadence. You're going to have to test against new versions and make sure that it's operating 
the exact same way it was operating on the previous version and fixing any errors that you find as you do so. If you have regulatory compliance requirements, you're likely going to have to go and recertify after you do that upgrade because you're now on a new version of the software. And so this conveyor belt is a real thing for those of us using PHP. A lot of you are on that conveyor, conveyor belt. Almost three quarters of you did a migration in the past year. Although larger companies were more likely to do these migrations than smaller companies, as we can see here. And that number drops to two out of three if you're not using container or orchestration technologies. So remember how I was gushing about containers and how useful they are and how they give you a lot of confidence? This is the reason why I find them so intriguing and compelling for the PHP ecosystem. You can often test a new PHP version immediately just by changing the PHP version in your container and then running it through your QA pipeline. If you find issues, you can fix it. Your developer can go and take that same container that you've just built, run tests in there, fix things, and understand immediately if that worked or not. And this gives you huge confidence when you're upgrading and allows your own developers to quickly start performing necessary code updates for migrations instead of waiting. When you have to provision a lot of architecture and system information, it becomes harder and harder for people to keep up. So containers really help mitigate that problem. I want to end on a high note today, and I wanna talk about how people actually feel about PHP. Every year with the landscape survey, we actually go and ask, you know, what do you like about PHP and would you use it again, et cetera. We asked a number of statements here. To what extent do you agree with the statements? What we found is that people find it enjoyable. They like working with PHP. It's a pleasant experience. They understand the syntax. It does what is expected. They also find that it's easy to learn. It's relatively easy to get started with PHP. In most cases, you can download PHP, install it on your computer, and fire up a program that just says echo hello world, and you're done. And you have just started learning PHP and started on your path towards writing web applications. This is hugely important. A language that's hard to get started with is one that people aren't going to bother with. Many also said they'd choose it again for their web applications and APIs. So it's easy to learn, it's enjoyable to work with, and because of those factors, they're likely to choose it again to make more web applications, make more web APIs. This is important. A lot of people say, oh, PHP is dead, or PHP is this toy language, but it's not. People are really happy with using it and they're able to do powerful things. They're able to glue together a huge number of technologies as we've seen already in this um, presentation. Because they're able to do all of those things, it's very powerful as well. And people like the pace at which it changes. There's regular advancements being made in the language. A lot of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt around PHP as a language come from blog posts that were written 10, 15 years ago where people were saying PHP is dead and pointing out all the flaws and errors of PHP. In the meantime, PHP has continued evolving. It's got a number of features that are leading and bleeding edge for many languages. In many cases, we're actually cannibalizing features from other languages and trying to adopt them and learn how we can do them better within PHP. There's a lot of new features coming up in the future as well. So PHP is evolving at a pace that people enjoy, that they find easy to learn, and that they would choose over and over again for creating web applications and APIs. Mm -hmm.